Live trans and prosper. Hi, I'm Professor Brian David Phillips, and I just want to do a really quick video on how to set up your WizMaker P1 uh, 3D printer. It is an FDM or filament printer. Uh, if you got it through Kickstarter or you bought it off Amazon or got it somehow, some other way, all is fine. Uh, uh, however, the currently, as it stands now, uh, the file we get in the SD card that comes with the printer has a profile for the Cura software. Unfortunately, it's a draft software. And so you might want to set it up manually. And so I'm going to walk you through the process on setting it up manually so that you too can enjoy this happy, happy printer. So let's uh, get to it. First off, you need the Cura software. If you don't know what that is, the Cura software is software that comes from over here, ultimaker.com. And if you go to the software page, and then just scroll down to the software page, and there's your Ultimary Gerp Cura. Let's learn more. And here we go. Download for free. It's free software. Uh, you can hit that. And then you'll get options for choose your operating system. I'm running Windows because I'm not an idiot. Uh, however, if you're running Linux because you're a glutton for punishment or Apple-based Mac software, because you enjoy spending uh, more for a brand. Uh, and uh, please, no comments below on that little snarkery. Uh, so click on that, download it. I've already downloaded, I've already installed. So download yours, install it. Uh, the software that comes with the printer is the older version of Cura. Uh, I'm installing the newest version. And uh, so I don't see why you wouldn't, because the newest version is more reliable and actually slices uh, faster prints. So yay that. So here we go. Let's go into Cura. It says, welcome to Ultimaker Cura. Let's get started. Okay, I'm getting started. Yeah, I'm going to agree. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't want to do any of that. Uh, let's just skip it all. Add a printer. Okay. Now, either from this screen or under file settings, you can do this. I'm going to add a non-networked printer. Now, here's the tricky thing. The WizMaker is not, if you scroll down to the W's, you're not going to find WizMaker. Okay, and so you want to go up to the C's and go to Creality. So Creality 3D has a lot of printers and many, uh, many of the less expensive 3D printers out there right now are based on the same structure and workability as the Creality. So just go scroll on down to the Creality Ender 3. Click on that. Okay. Hit next. And now you've got your printer set to set up. Okay. Now later you can change the name. But we want to make some changes because the X, Y, and Z are a little different for our printer. We want to change the X and Y to 220 and the Y 220. The Z is the height. So we want to change that to 265. Okay. Uh, keep uh, most of the rest, just keep it where it is. Uh, it's the pretty much heated bed, all of this. We're going to make some changes later 
to this. And so uh, extruder, uh, we'll, we'll change that later. It's 1.75. That's the kind of uh, nozzle you're going to need. So hit next. And uh, what's new and all that. So we're going to skip all that. You might want to read it. Okay, so I've got a Creality Ender 3 now is installed. So I'm going to go to my Manage Printers. And I am going to rename this from Creality Ender 3. I'm going to Wizzy Wizzy Maker P1. Yes, I know. I know, if you're an English speaker, particularly if you have a North American accent, WizMaker P1 sounds like a joke. It's not. Uh, the company was manufactured in China, and they don't realize that in English, WizMaker, or to make whiz, means to pee. Whiz, to whiz is to pee. And they even named it the P1. So I'm going to take a whiz. I'm going to make some whiz with my P1. Uh, that sounds like a joke. It's not a joke. It really is the name of the printer. And that really is the model. Yay. And so if you have the humor development of a sophomore in high school, it's very funny. Uh, lucky for me, I do indeed have a sophomore level of humor. Let's hit o OK. You can use whatever name you like if you're uncomfortable with that, but it's branded on the, the device. Alrighty, so we got our printers. Now uh, we got our profiles here. I'm going to check out standard quality and we're going to Okay, let's go here, and all right, now I'm going to move myself over here so that I am not uh, in the way, and let's pop this sucker down and go to our – okay, took a while to get there. Um, you might need to set this for, okay, go to your standard quality, and let's change some settings. So, uh, so um, if we scroll down, after we've renamed our printer, and we scroll down here under standard quality, you may need to set it to uh, expert mode if you're not in expert mode. Uh, and so, under standard quality, for a standard print, I want to make some changes. So I want to go first to material. All of these have bunches and bunches of settings in them. Um, you can see that. So uh, all that. So you'll get used to it if you're new to 3D printing. I know I am. Uh, I'm making this video for me and for my daughter, actually. Uh, so that uh, we're okay for doing all this. But let's go to material here. Go to material, pop that sucker open, and we want to make some changes. So uh, printing temperature. I'm using uh, Cura settings uh, recommended by Paul Feeney, and I will put a link to his YouTube video on this from the WizMaker official group, as well as to his YouTube channel or one of his channels, so you can check out his stuff. But these are settings that he recommended, and I have found that they seem to work okay. So under printing temperature, instead of 200, I'm going to change that sucker to 208. And build plate temperature, I want to move that up to 58. All right. And that'll that tends to give you better adhesion and tends to give you better work. Now under travel, down here more, I'm going to pop that sucker open, and I want to make sure enable retraction is on. So make sure that's checked on, and I see that I 
in not in the expert mode. So let's see if we can open that up. Okay, uh, I'm not in expert mode, so I don't have all the options I want to be changing. So I go next to the search bar, and I just click on this uh, three-line thing, and I can choose advanced or expert, okay? And so then I, I now have my printing temperature. Notice that printing temperature initial layer, we've got that set for the same. Uh, build plate temperature is 58. It it's automatically changes some stuff for us, okay? And so uh, I think, I yeah, I do want expert. Not just advanced. Expert gives me more options to play with. All right. Now, you don't necessarily want to change all this stuff, but you have options. Now, let's go to travel. And when I've selected... Enable retraction, you see a whole bunch of options come on. So we'll do that. And we want to enable retraction and retraction distance. Right now it's at five millimeters. And I'm actually going to change that because we have what's called a direct drive extruder. Uh, whereas the Ender 3 does not. It has a simple Bowden extruder. And so we want to change this. We don't have to have a quite as far a distance. We're going to change it to 1. So you could change it to uh, 1.2, 1.8, all the way up to, say, 2. Um, but for our purposes, we're going to knock it into 1. That's what um, Paul Feeney suggested in his video. So... We're at 1 for the retraction distance, and then retraction speed, we're going to switch that puppy to, from 45, we're going to switch it to 25. So now we're at 25, and you see that these other settings also changed for us. And then we're going to go down. We're going to go down, down, deeper down to minimum extrusion distance window. Notice it's at 10, which is what it was earlier, but it's got a, a yellow or red warning here, which says, something's wrong with these settings, you fool. Fix it. So we're going to fix that. Instead of 10, we're going to go... Now, this could, you're, usually this is about the same as what you did with the retraction distance, but we're going to switch it to two. Paul suggested two millimeters. And those are just a few setting changes, and that's all you need to change when you're a beginner, like me. We are the beginners, and that'll get you started. And so um, that's my standard quality setting now. And, of course, I can... Uh, make tweaks to that and things like that. Now, how do I use this? Uh, let's uh, get that out of the way. How do I use this? How do I use this uh, a slicing software? I assume it cuts up cake for me. So how would we do that? Let me get this. Okay, so what do we do? How do we get files? Well, we go to software. And so let's head on over to printables.com slash model. Or you, when you go to printables.com, you can hit 3D models. And this is a, a, a place like things.com or Thingiverse that has STL files. Those are files you can use to uh, print them to 3D objects in your happy, happy 3D printer. Uh, and you can just look through categories La 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 la, here we go, toys and games, and all sorts of things. Some of them are practical, some of them not so much. Let's go to toys and games because I'm a very serious person, and what am I going to use? I'm going to be using a lot of stuff for RPGs or for action figures. So let's check out RPG figures, and we can see uh, miniatures. Or other things. So um, 
objective markers. Uh, we just want something that we can real quick uh, print. Okay, let's look for an elf. Just for our purposes, let's just choose elf. Choose an elf archer. I have an elf archer. Ooh, that's a nice mage. Oh, there's so much. Ooh, that's a very nice bust. So I'm going to go with the mage because uh, no supports needed. Nice. Okay, I'll download the elf mage. Okay, I have an elf mage ready to go. Let us go to file, open file, and then we just uh, head on over to the drive you want and uh, open her up. It is loading. There we go. I can use the wheel on my mouse to go further in. I can check her out. Okay, not the best quality. Uh, it says no supports needed. So uh, supports, what does that mean? That means over here. Uh, if you find that there's too much, uh, stick, too many things sticking out, you may need to print up what are called supports. Uh, and supports, uh, you can generate supports or not. Uh, but essentially, it'll uh, print extra bits to hang on to things. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to, it says no slice, no, none necessary. But you might need it for something like this. Uh, if you do it bigger. And so I could click on this and I can do scale. And currently I am 36 millimeters high, which is a pretty standard size. But I actually play at a different scale. And so I'm going to move it up to 65 because that's the scale that uh, I play. Uh, because I like my miniatures big and cool. So I just hit this slice button and it'll slice it. What that means is it's creating code which will go to my printer and tell it wh what pattern to put the plastic down. Okay. Uh, this is going to be, uh, it'll take an hour and 47 minutes to print this. And it'll take 12 grams of plastic, of filament. So I would mark that down. I would keep that whenever you slice things. And then you can save to removable disk. And it just saved into my USB drive. And that's it. Uh, that is the awesomeness that is the slicer in setting up your Cura. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I know it ran a little long, but hey, what else? I'll put the settings in the description as well as some links to Paul Feeney's uh, information uh, video where he goes through this in a much quicker fashion and obviously much more organized. But hey, my channel, my YouTube, my nonsense. Uh, this is, of course, my role-playing channel, and I will be putting more 3D printing things up here related to role-playing. Most of my role-playing right now on the YouTube is, of course, online using Owlbear. But we'll also have some stuff for 
those of the those of you who play in person the just the last couple of years uh, we don't want to play in person i love you i like you you're fun to game with but i don't fucking want you in my house not yet eventually yeah everybody gets vaccinated everybody gets boosted everybody gets boosted again until we go into a never ending loop of Boosta, 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 and uh, things get safe again. Things are not completely safe. If you look at me, you can see I have issues, so I don't want to catch horrible plagues. But for now, this is just me, Brian David Phillips, saying, Live trance and prosper. Bye-bye.